What's up guys, Tugi here, back again, back after a very busy weekend, but I'm excited to be back because in this episode we see if we can make the playoffs here in Season 3. We missed the first two years, it's time for this team to get it done. We have 32 games left, we are currently in a wild card spot, and after taking a look at the team, I think we're just going to keep them together. We're going to keep them together for now and just hope that they can get shit done. If not, there might be players we move out. Matthew Kachuk, you know, I really, I'd like him to have over 50 points as a top-line guy. As crazy as that is to say, we could trade him for someone around the same area. I don't think I'll trade him, but guys like Wenberg, Milano are not exactly safe right now. We also made two uh, player-type changes on offense. Dubois to a sniper, because why the fuck not? We need him to get his offense going. And Pugliarv back to a power forward. Defensively, Seth Jones is once again a two-way I believe that those are all of the changes. But yeah, let's get into the sim. Let's see if we can keep up the momentum that we started to pick up at the end of the last episode. We have a month before the trade deadline. The only trade I know for a fact that we will be doing is getting rid of Michael Matheson. Although he doesn't even really have that much trade value at the moment. So who knows? Maybe I'll just hold on to him. And as it is, the Cleveland Monsters are doing great. 29-10-2 so far this season, so it might be worth keeping him. But anyway, let's start the sim. We are going until February 27th. That'll give us a little bit of time before the trade deadline to make the moves that we have to make if we decide we have to make any. So let's see. Can the Quebec City Nordiques find themselves in a playoff spot when we reach the 27th? 31-26-4. and four. As you can see, this month hasn't gone to plan. We have currently lost four straight games. Things aren't going well. I have been doing everything possible, changing up lines, just trying to get something going. We are currently outside of the playoff structure, one point behind the Philadelphia Flyers. But this has been incredibly frustrating. We have 21 games to go. These are the lines we've been rolling with. I've had Dubois and Wenberg bouncing back and forth between the second and third line. I have them both on the third line. Just trying anything that I can do. puyarvi has been disappointing. Dubois has been disappointing. Wenberg's been miserable. 20 points is simply not good enough. 18 points for Sonny Milano. And the defense, we've put David Savard on the top pairing with uh, Vlasic and then, of course, Lindholm and Seth Jones together. And they have found a little bit of chemistry. Jones is up to a 92 now. But still, uh, Corpy Salo has actually dropped to an 89 from a 90. He still has a solid save percentage. The goal scoring. Players that just haven't panned out are killing us right now. I did want to say, though, Kai Gorodov, uh, the Alsner trade, it's looking pretty good. Kai, Dor Kai Gorodov already up to an 82 overall. And we also picked up Ryan Murphy on waivers from Carolina. Figured why the hell not. We'll give him a shot as he improves the Cleveland defense. Greg Bateran was the scratched player. It's, But as far as what we do, I, I know we need to make a move. I know we do, but it's just, it's now the time. Do we sink or swim with this team? Or do we just hope that it turns around? There really haven't been, there's been one trade, Jamie McGinn to the Vancouver Canucks, who are actually doing pretty well. We actually had him offered to us as well. Like any, any trade we would make, it would have to be a big move in a way. I mean, trading, like you look at the underperforming players, Puglia Yarvi. I mean, he's only 20, so I wouldn't want to get rid of him. I wouldn't get rid of Kachuk. I was joking about that. Dubois, he's 20. Do we get rid of him? I don't know. Wenberg, very disappointing. We could definitely go out, but... And you know, and try and get a replacement for him. He's on a really good contract, though. It's just, it's, it's been miserable. Individual performance, individual performance, individual performance. At least he knows he's underperforming. And then Sonny Milano as well, 22, medium top six potential. He's still supposed to be getting better. His contract's coming up, but throughout the season, you can even tell recent individual performance. It's like the players know that they're underperforming. So that's why I'm trying all the different line uh, line combinations to try and get things going. But for now, uh, I'm going to at least take a look. I can't promise trades, but I'll at least take a look. 
So guys, after quite a bit of time scouting out just every team, I just, I can't make a trade right now. I can't, I'm tempted. Because as you guys know, if you watch the Vancouver series, my God, I want to get my hands on Oliver Ekman Larson in one of these series. And I was trying to work out a deal that would involve Hampus Lindholm. But really, the only way it would happen is if we put Blasek in the deal, which, trust me, I was tempted because there are players that I'd want. You know, we could have Jonathan Drouin to replace Saad. We could have Merkley to replace Wenberg. And then they have other prospects, even someone like Anthony D'Angelo and then some further guys, or some guys further down here, Dvorak, uh, Christian Fisher, and who was the other one? Connor Garland, even though he has AHL potential. But basically, the asking prices are just too high. And if we're going to make any major, major trades, I mean, it's, it's tough. Because we I feel like we have such a good group of players, they just need to get it done. So if we do anything major, it'll be in the off season. We'll give Wenberg the remaining time in the season. We'll give a lot of these guys, you know, they're on notice. They have to start getting it done here in the last half of the season. We have to make the playoffs. If we miss the playoffs, there will be hell to pay for a lot of players. That is for sure. But we'll sim the Ranger game here. We'll go past the trade deadline. Please tell me. At least, okay, we at least beat the Rangers 2-1. And over time, not nice to give a division divisional rival a point. Uh, we currently find ourselves one spot back of both Washington and Philly. I did want to take a look. It took three seasons. And you watch now. There won't be any trades now that I remembered. And exactly. So see, even when I remember to try and be like, hey, here's what happened at the trade deadline. Literally, nothing happened. So moving forward, we have 20 games left in this season. And for a team that's expected to be... You know, according to the game itself, cup contenders, it's looking like unless we have a dominant month here that we're going to be squeaking into the playoffs. So as I always do, we will sim to April 1st. We have six games in that month, a very short month at the end of the season. I'm just going to stop stalling. I'm so nervous we're going to miss the playoffs. Let's sim to April 1st and just pray that we're in a decent spot. April 1st has arrived, and we are just awful. That's the only way to put it. 37, 33, and 7. The only thing keeping us afloat are those overtime losses, as you can see. The month starts off with three losses. We pick up some wins, and then we lose five straight. Yeah, an overtime loss. Actually, six straight. An overtime loss to St. Louis. We ended up beating the Blues, which is nice. And then Enroth has actually played the last three games where we've only dropped one point. He'll actually play the next game against the Buffalo Sabres. And let's take a look here. We are still four points out. We are four points out of a playoff spot. I am losing my goddamn mind with this team. And if it comes to the offseason, our top scorer has 48 points. That's a joke. Like, that is a joke with some of the offensive talent we have on this team. That is absurd you look at these other point totals and maybe we should have fucking traded for Ekman Larson he's a free agent maybe we can pick him up and he can't even say like oh well you know lower overalls like we have some guys who aren't quite as good as Patrick Line but he has 73 points our leading scorer he, he fucking he's seven points lower than Matthew Kachuk and he's crushing him it's not even close Kyle Palmieri is just crushing Kachuk right now I mean, it is unbelievable. I'm waiting to see, like, some bullshit name. Bo Horvat has more points than Matthew Kachuk. I rest my case. Oh, my God. And it's not even close. It's not even close. Oh, my God. I just... At this point, I'm hoping we miss. Because I'm just going to sell everybody. Holy shit. You think Kachuk's safe? Hell no. There isn't one person... In this lineup, that's that's safe. Other than probably Nick Cardiles, who I'm actually pretty happy with. 21 points on the fourth line. He's done his job pretty damn well. So, Nick Cardiles, you're safe. Seth Jones, you're not fucking safe. You're a 92 overall, and you have 18 points. You have four goals on 168 shots. Some fucking drunk guy at the intermission who takes the shot from center ice would have more fucking goals than you would just off of sheer luck. 
David Savard, 26 points. Cool, whatever. One goal on 150 shots. Mark Edward Vlasic, 19 points. He's a minus eight. Not exactly making me happy. I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to go through the rest. Uh, Darnell Nurse is out, so Michael Matheson has been in because he has absolutely no fucking trade value, despite being low top four. So I just, I don't know. I don't know. This team could be drastically different after this upcoming offseason, even if we squeak into the playoffs here, because this is just pissing me off. There's nothing that pisses me off more in franchise mode than underperforming players. If we have a bad team, whatever, but we don't, and we lose 5-3 to Buffalo, who are pretty much fighting for their playoff lives like we are, God damn it. And we're now six points back. We are six points back of the Hurricanes with four games to go. So we're done. We're done. We'd have to win all four and hope that they don't pick up any other points along the way. We're done. A team with a champion's tag when you go to the goddamn trading system is going to miss the playoffs again. You know, the first two years, I could kind of see it. I could kind of see why we might miss the playoffs. But now, with this team, with this defense, Vlasic, Corpy Salo, it's not his fault in the slightest. Not in the goddamn slightest. We had so many games this season where we only had one goal. And it's official now. We have not made the playoffs, which is, oh my god. I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Corpy Salo, 926 save percentage. That is good enough to get a team into the playoffs. And Enroth as well still had a 920, so we didn't completely sink him once he came over here from Vancouver in the Hammond trade. I just, I'm fine with the goaltending. It's just everybody else that's underperformed yet again. Like I said, the first two years, I understand. I absolutely understand in the first two years, missing out, scouting, whatever. I'll just fucking give it to the queue for nine defenders in the queue six weeks who gives a fuck the system's broken and fuck it we'll give ender off the carolina game oh my god i am so fucking salty right now. but i feel like i deserve to be because that's that's embarrassing paul bittner goes down to injury just before the monsters playoff push oh my god you know what normally i all right, I'm going to sim to the end of the playoffs. There you can see the bracket. Let me sim to the end of the playoffs, or at least to the start of the Monsters playoff push. I don't know what I want to do, but we'll follow it, I guess. So because I'm so starved just to fucking win something, we have absolutely stacked the Cleveland Monsters, who finished second in their division, I do believe. Kachuk, Dubois, Puglia Yarby, and Sonny Milano have been sent down, as has uh, Matt Olson. Uh, we were able to send them down without punishment, and that's uh, pretty much how it's going. So we will see if this team can at least bring home some sort of hardware for us, because otherwise I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. This has been absolutely horrific. Can you please just advance to the second round, beyond the second round? The second round is where they lost last year to the Manitoba Moose, I do believe. And they are one game away from being eliminated, going to game five, and they're out in the first round with a 91 overall on the top line in the AHL, and they still lose. That'll do it for this one. We'll cover stats, we'll sim the rest of the playoffs, and we'll do all that shit in the next episode because I don't even want to look at this game right now. I do thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed, hit that like button. It'll cheer me up, and I desperately need it. Subscribe if you haven't already as well. That'll also cheer me up in a tremendous way. And I will see you guys in the next one, where I get rid of every worthless piece of garbage on this team.